my dear brothers sisters father like elders mother like mothers first i pay regard to all of you that you took some time out of your busy schedule in order to listen to this speech i am taking this opportunity to express my views on eating vegetarian and non vegetarian food just to let you know that i have collected this information which i am going to present in front of you over a span of time it is from medical journals papers libraries and other stuff at this point whole humanity is fully engrossed in materialistic world i am delivering this speech with consideration in my mind that at least few of my brothers and sisters will come out of deep dungeon of eating animals and other bad stuff which is not good for human health i'll try to answer most of the questions posed by non vegetarian brothers that is meat eaters and after listening to my answers in case if you feel that i have presented 51% fact then please follow and become human and pass it on to others the definition of human is very simple for me human being is a species which be friend with nature which lives in harmony with nature and especially with other species which are similar to human being that is the species which have a central nervous system similar to what humans have like we have eye to see ear to hear nose to smell tongue to taste touch or feel love and pain now the love here means when you touch an animal like cow she feels the love when you touch an animal a animal behaves in a particular way and reacts to the love towards you and you also feel that emotional feeling pain again means when attacked or forcefully afflicted it causes a harm to them or they try to run away they try to protect themselves they try to protect their offsprings it in the same way the human tries to protect its offspring when someone hits human human also attacks or they run away in the same way all those animals which come under this category should not be eaten by human beings because they are just like you the only difference is in the consciousness in the thinking in the intellect that humans have now remember we have three types of poison one poison kill suddenly which is like a cyanide the other one can take months to year and third one take 10 to 15 years and result into diseases which kills a person over a span of time remember my point like meat eaters and veg they both can live long life but difference is one lives with medicine and the other without the quality of life is different and definitely vegetarian lives far longer than non vegetarians we all should remember that there is a wide difference between doctors and research doctors i have seen when i discuss with my friends with my near and dear ones they all go by what doctors say but basically do we know what is the definition of doctor do we know what are the different kinds of doctor do we know whether we have a doctor and something called a research scientist today's word people are always giving reference of doctor but they really do not understand that doctor is just doing his job he is working for medical industry and is a part of a supply chain where based on symptoms he provides medicine every month or every week whenever new medicine is released there is a medical journal it mentions the process through which the medicine has been created how the medical medicine affects the cell and what and under what circumstances the medicine should be given to the patient consider it like this suppose i am a marketing salesman i know my product very well because my company has given me a journal it has given me the whole engineering stuff wisdom and after understanding that i go in the market i find out the customer and i make a sales to the customer in the similar way the doctors are also working now there is a difference between this kind of doctor who works for around 30 40 years in the field and provides medicine to you, your disease based on certain symptoms but there is another kind of doctor which is called research scientist now these are the people basically and i have worked with them i have seen those people 
they basically take out your cell they further go deep into the cell look to the dna rna how the helical structure is made and they test certain chemicals on that and then they find out okay this particular chemical is working let's try to make some medicine out of it after a number of experiments sampling and all that let's not go deep into that but see these are the people who really understand how the disease is working inside the body and what they can do in order to prevent the disease or not even prevent the disease in order to manage the disease see the same medical industry supports most of the medical schools and control most of the medicine industry which is around 3 trillion usd in us alone in spite of such expenditure and money spent daily we see new diseases almost 26 million people are diabetic in usa and obesity has become epidemic in us alone cancer is wide prevalent in society and so many diseases are spreading among people every day every week every month and every year you can find out some new kind of virus has been created in the lab you can find out some new diseases spreading either in us or europe or other part of the world now we need to find out whether the actual cause of disease are uh, is this virus or bacteria alone or is it the kind of a food which we are eating now in my journey what i focused is on the research doctors not the ordinary doctors who simply prescribe the medicine out of the research doctors when i start i started studying about different journals i found out that even the research doctors are of different type there are certain research there are doctors belonging to medical institution funded by medical industry industry and they write in their favor only because their jobs are dependent on them and this is a very big lobby because it is one of the biggest industry on which united states run there are two main industries or i can say now three main industries one is the food the other one is medicine and the third one is arms on which the united states of america runs and the biggest lobby is basically of the medical industry where at present the mnc's political and medical industry doctors and scientists medical schools they all are interlinked it's kind of a supply chain which is going on so i try to not to consider the research which has been done by these people that is the research scientist who are working for particular institutions who and the institutions which are funded by the industry because it's a common sense such a research scientist is not going to publish a study which will be against the policies of the multinational corporation in my journey i found out many courageous scientists have done that and finally they were thrown out of the gates so i have considered all above factors in my speech personally and i have met with the scientist and the researcher and after that i prepared this presentation for whole humanity considering above in mind i proceed i had i proceed to shake the long held belief system that humans are made to eat meat this speech will provide strong reasoning and scientific facts to counter almost all the questions posed by meat eaters please do let me know if you find any fault in the data this will be appreciated and if found wrong from our side it will be corrected my mother tongue is not english so please forgive me for the mistakes which i make and please focus on the information which is my sole purpose i'll try to communicate the information to you i pray to omniscient omnipresent and omnipotent god who pervades the whole universe he is the god holy spirit allah ishwar or any other name you can be to take us out of this cruelty and that has engulfed humanity and lead us towards love peace and mercy this is what i pray to the god in most of the discussions people ask about egg and milk from where i want to start so what i have done i have collected number of questions regarding egg and milk and i am going to take them one by one i'll speak out the question then i'll reply with the answer for that particular question now remember the companies 
the way the multinational companies work is continuous growth growth means growth means how much profit they make every year how much money they give to their employees and how much salary increment is there now salary increment can be only there when company is making more and more profit now think for a second the industries which were which survives basically on natural resources let's say petroleum industry or any kind of industry in some or the other way they are consuming nature and you know we have only one planet earth where the natural resources are limited so just think what kind of mentality the multinational people have when they talk about growth growth and growth what i consider growth is the development of a human being how good you become in your life how many people you help how much you love the nature how you protect the nature how you love the human being this is what something called is humanity and this is what i call growth where you love how to be spiritual how to have inner peace how to live in harmony with the nature as well as your human beings second point is if you see all the multinational corporations they always try to sell more and more because this is the only way to have more growth now whenever there is not a market they try to sell the product in that market and for that they try to create the market first this is something which i learned in my management school that even if you don't have the market you should know how to change the habit of people and create a market we will come to all these and i'm going to create some separate speeches on multinational and how they work but here my emphasis is you might be hearing that egg is called vegetarian now can any logical person think that egg can be a vegetarian these days by propagating eggs as vegetarian people are being spoiled youths are falling prey to this propaganda therefore it is our collective responsibility that the society is awakened in this context vegetarian food can be called only those eatables which are produced from vegetables but my friends eggs are neither produced in any farm like cereals nor do these ripe on any creeper or tree like vegetables or fruits this is clearly the progeny of five sensed hen only this is well known to all of us that the flesh of the body right from two sense being up to the five sense being is meat only therefore food produced out of eggs is clearly flesh food only in no way it can be considered as vegetarian just to make the market and to have a psychological impact different world organizations they have started calling eggs as vegetarian now the question posed by one of my friend is milk is also part of animal so it is bad now the answer is see there is a vast difference between milk and egg by taking out milk from the body of the cow or goat no harm is done to their lives whereas by use of egg the creature inside the egg is killed if the milk producing cow or goat is not milk at the proper time then agony is caused to it the mother who feed their children by their milk if do not get the milk by chance an opportunity to feed them then even fever is caused to the mother they have to draw out milk by their own hands and this is something which is very practical you can talk to any mother who is feeding her kid if the milk is not drawn out at proper time they have a pain so they have to do a suction they have to take the milk out same is the problem with the cow if the milk is not taken out the cow also goes through the same kind of pain so we need to make sure that milk is not like egg where egg can become a chick or even if it doesn't become a chick we will show you how it is still a flesh now question number 2 which is posed harm is caused to the cow by drawing milk even it may get relief but the calf has its right over the milk how can you snatch that right from it does this not amount to injustice to the cow and the calf okay my friend the answer is yes from one angle it may be called injustice 
but in no way involves the type of injury which results in meat eating. If one thinks over deeply on this point, uh, again I am saying if you think deeply on this point, then it is not justifiable to call it injustice. Be because in return for taking milk from the cow, all arrangements are made for the food, water, shelter and safe living of both cow and calf. If milk is not obtained from the cow, then who would make arrangements for it food, water, etc. And you will be surprised. The cow is treated like a mother in India, especially in the South Asian countries. It is treated like a mother. And cow is fed with a special kind of cake which has a lot of minerals and proteins so that more blood is created in the cow. And the blood is not <laughs> taken out and drunk by the human being. It is the hormone which converts the blood into milk. And the milk is taken by the human being. Milk is taken by the people and they drink the milk. Another question which is raised on the same. But the injustice done to the calf still remains because it has obviously been deprived of its right. See, this is also not true. Firstly, in return, it provided with other food and secondly, by giving wholesome food to the cow, extra milk is produced. Thus, extra milk is obtained by gentlemen. The calf is still get its rightful share. If that cow were to live in the jungle, then it would have to depend on grass leaves only and consequently, it could produce about one liter of milk only. But see, when we give it wholesome food like oil cake, etc., then same cow gives 4 to 5 liters of milk. The calf gets a share of about 1 liter of milk. Only the extra milk is obtained by the gentleman. My friends, you might have seen, if you go to the farmhouse where organic milk is produced, the calf drinks the milk and after some time the calf is taken away because calf has taken away around a liter of a milk from the mother or the cow the rest of the milk is taken by the people it's not like the right of the cow right right of the calf has been snatched it is same as what happens with the human being slowly and slowly you try to pull away the kid from the mother's milk and then slowly you start giving the raw food because this is how the body develops first it takes milk mother's milk slowly it takes cow milk and slowly it comes off the cow milk and start taking the raw food after 6 or 7 or 8 months. Same is the process of the, with the calf. So in this way it is a form of give and take. Where lies injustice in it? I don't, I don't think there is any, some kind of injustice in it. If in this way we would make a conjecture of injustice in it, then such type of give and take takes place together in the human race as well. We do take service from other by paying suitable remuneration in social life providing of employment to an unemployed person in exchange for suitable remuneration is called benevolence but not exploitation nor injustice. In the same way, taking milk from the cow in return for suitable arrangements and the safety of the cow and calf should be considered as a mutual benefit and not as exploitation or injustice. You know, Indian culture, as I already told you, cow is respected like a mother Therefore, comparing egg with milk is not only unjustifiable, but it is also an indication of a question, question which is like this. Is. Can you please explain what egg actually is? Do you have any scientific explanation whether egg is vegetarian or it's a non-vegetarian? I have heard a number of times that egg is like a female reproductive cycle output. Okay, let me try to explain this question. It's a pretty interesting one and hardly very few people know about this. Before even I delve deeper into this, let me try to take you through a journey of female reproductive cycle. I'm sure many of you might be knowing it and many of you can gain this uh, wisdom across the internet and other places. I'll try to explain it in a very simple terms, like every month a human produces an egg from one of her ovaries. This wall of the uterus become a nice comfy home for the egg by filling with blood to become like plush cushions. Now at this place if the egg meets a sperm, the cushion becomes a sofa for the baby to relax on for 9 months in very simple terms. 
though the cycle actually is like the egg moves through a kind of a duct it goes into the uterus there are hormones which makes the wall of the uterus and during that certain duration if there is a fusion between the egg and the sperm from the male it results into a kind of a like a baby and this surface results as a cushion now if the egg doesn't meet a sperm the uterus says these cushions are so last month let's make some new ones and the body gets rid of the cushion the uterus like it's like a kind of a diva the body does some interior decorating and the girl has her period this is very simple explanation for something which is highly complex now hens or female chickens have a cycle that can be daily during certain times of the year like humans hens have ovaries though only the left ovary develops fully this ovary basically sends a yolk on its path the yolk forms what we know as an egg white as it moves through the reproductive tract into the shell gland the shell takes about 21 hours to form an cluck so in this way you can always say yes it's a it's a period of a hen now even if you feel this is not convincing let's go into the journey inside the hen be with me try to imagine what i am saying now and we all will dive deep into the complete reproductive structure of a hen i'll try to explain it so you all can visualize because i cannot show you by cutting it now the female reproductive system of the chicken is basically divided into two separate parts the ovary and the oviduct think of a ovary like this the best example can be imagine if a person has got burns and the burns are so severe that there are lump of skin and the water is inside that skin now if lot of lumps or the balloons having water are in one place some big some small together they form ovary of a hen now this ovary is a cluster of developing yolks which you see as a yellow part so you can say it is a yellow part yolks or a ova and it is located midway between the neck and the tail of the bird the ovary is fully formed when pullet chick hatches so now pullet chick is it's a young chick but it is very small until the chick reaches sexual maturity at hatch pullet chicks have tens of thousand of potential eggs that is your ova which theoretically could be laid most of these however never develop to the point of evolution so the maximum number of eggs a hen can lay is determined when she hatches since no new ova are added once the chick has hatched now each ovum now this each ovum which is basically a singular form of ova is start out it starts as a single cell surrounded by a something they call it vitellin membrane as the ovum develops yolk is added again remember what is yolk it's a yellow part the color of the yolks yolk come from a fat soluble pigment called xanthophyll now this particular color can be changed based on like what kind of food you are giving to the hen or your chicken or whatever it is remember this evolution is the term used for the release of mature ovum from the ovary into the second part of the female reproductive system the oviduct and this ovum is enclosed in a sac it's kind of a sac rupture along the sutra line or stigma so think like this stigma now as i already mentioned you you have a burned skin which has lot of uh, uh you can say a burned skin which is having a balloon which are having uh, the fluid in it now on the skin top you will see certain nerves or the membranes which are running those are like 
called stigma in this sense the second major part of the female chicken reproductive system is the oviduct this oviduct is a long convoluted tube which is around 25 to 27 inches long when fully developed and it is divided into five major sections they are like first is funnel then magnum the isthmus uterus or shell gland and vagina now the first part of the oviduct the funnel is 3 to 4 inch long and engulfs the ovum release from the ovary so now remember this is the ovum that your yellow part which is has been released from the ovary so it is like one of the lumps burned lump which has broken and released from the ovary now this ovum stays in place and the muscular funnel moves to surround it the ovum or yolk remain in the funnel for 15 to 18 minutes this is the place where fertilization is going to occur so remember where the fertilization takes place it's in the ovum in the funnel the next section of the oviduct is the magnum which is 13 inches long and is the largest section of the oviduct so the ovum or yolk that yellow part remains here like around 3 hours during which time thick white or albumin is added so now remember it's a thick white or albumin is added at this place the third section of the oviduct is the isthmus which is 4 inches long the developing egg remains here for 75 minutes the isthmus as its name implies is slightly constricted isthmus is where the inner and outer shell membranes are added so now remember this is a place where inner and outer shell membranes are added the next section of the oviduct is the shell gland or uterus the shell gland is 4 to 5 inches long and the egg remains here for 20 plus hour this is very important as the name implies the shell is placed on the egg here the shell is largely made up of calcium carbonate and the hen mobilizes 47 of percent of her body calcium from her bones to make the egg shell with the diet providing the remainder of the required calcium so my friends many people eat egg considering proteins mineral vitamins and all other other stuff in it why don't you eat the shell just mix it in milk and take the calcium so it will remove all your calcium uh, in deficiency which you are having in the body but no one does that now this process is similar what happens in the female body where like you have periods at a regular interval the last part of the oviduct is the vagina which is about 4 5 inch long and does not really play a part in the egg formation the vagina is made of muscles which help push the egg out of the hen's body the bloom like it's a coating which is done on the egg to protect its bacteria and other virus to go inside the egg is added to the egg in the vagina prior to oviposition that is the laying of the fully formed egg so remember my friends this <laughs> this process itself is similar to what we have in human female the only difference is in the timing and the duration so what happens like birds lay egg in clutches a clutch consists of one or more eggs laid each day for several days followed by a rest period of about a day or more then another egg or set of eggs is laid clutch size is species and breed is breed specific for commercial egg layer clutch size is typically quite large clutch size as well as the number of clutches laid in a laying cycle will vary with the species but see the principle is same the principle is not uh, very much different so evolution of a yolk for the next egg in a clutch occurs within an hour of laying the previous egg and so that each day the hen gets later and later in her timing as an analogy she runs behind like a clock that is improperly adjusted so the hen keeps on getting delayed every day when she is laying the egg so this is like kind of a, actually it is a it's a periodic cycle of a hen and she keeps on laying the egg after regular interval of time so why i give this complete description if you see <laughs> this is egg is actually an egg just like females have egg this egg if it meets 
the male sperm it converts into a baby chick right so how can we say that it is a vegetarian will you ever eat or will anyone will ever eat the periods of a woman it also has all these minerals proteins and vitamins the only difference is it came out because the egg was never fertilized in the same way if you see the hen the egg is not fertilized so the egg has come out but the way of coming out is different and in birds it is in the form of a egg so if you consider scientifically basically we are talking about the same thing the difference is in the species and i am sure no one can eat such a stuff in the life no one can should <laughs> even think of eating such a stuff many people argue like no 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 still we like because it has mineral proteins and vitamins you know there is something called a umbilical cord the cord which connects uh, the mother to the kid people eat that also in japan there is a there is a drink in which they mix that umbilical cord because it's very nutritious in some of the medicines it is being used nowadays it is being used uh, in some of the food items also well that is not the topic uh and that is not the thing which i want to present here so i'll not go very deep in that now coming to the another question do you have any scientific proofs that egg is bad for health well my friend i have ample amount of proofs and i'll start one by one let's start with american journal of clinical nutrition volume 87 2008 21327 doctors in the physician health study over a 20 year period found that people died earlier from all cause mortality depending on how many eggs they just ate and it is written in american journal of clinical nutrition volume 87 2008 just eating a mere one egg a day caused a worse mortality of 23% more overall deaths diabetics reacted twice as badly with almost 50% more overall death now you cannot argue with over 20000 people over 20 period year period egg cause overall mortality the more eggs you eat the sooner you die another reference european journal of cancer prevention volume 10 2001 people with bladder cancer were studied it was found that consumption of meat salted meat and eggs was associated with a single significant increase risk of bladder cancer let's go ahead zhongwa liu xing volume 21 2000 beijing cancer research institute breast cancer in chinese women was found to be associated with obesity intake of dairy products depression eating eggs now see the common thing is egg is everywhere in world another study american journal of epidemiology volume 156 2002 this is harvard university ovarian cancer was found to be clearly associated with egg consumption and increase in risk with frequent intake of egg was observed another at harvard university international journal of epidemiology volume 31 2002 doctors found breast cancer to be clearly related to egg consumption studying 351041 women this is one third of 1 million women that is okay this is right from harvard it's not from anywhere else at university of queensland cancer epidemiology biomarkers volume 11 2002 ovarian cancer was clearly associated with egg consumption with 20 references they compared healthy women with cancer patient there was a strong note the word is strong here again i am emphasizing there was a strong and significant dose response relation between cholesterol from egg and risk of ovarian cancer so again egg causes cancer another study this is hippel cancer research institute nutrition and cancer volume 46 2003 It studied 34 different countries for the relation of egg consumption to colon and rectal cancer 34 countries folks here they found egg consumption was associated with an increased risk of colon and rectal cancer 
द जैपनीज यूज टू हैव वेरी लो रेट ऑफ डायबिटीज एंड कैंसर स्पेशली कोलोन कैंसर नाउ एज दीज पीपल वेस्ट नाइज दे आर डाइट एंड मीट ईट मीट एग and milk and they started taking less rice and vegetable this has all changed now this is from aishi cancer research center in japan they said the rapidly rising rates of diabetes and colon cancer were closely associated with the increased consumption of meat eggs and milk it is from asian pacific journal of cancer prevention volume 5 2004 anyone can refer at centro di oncologico in italy British Journal of Cancer volume 80 1999 one 1491 men and women were studied for oral and throat cancer after allowing allowance for education smoking alcohol and total energy intake significant trends of increasing risk with increasing intake emerged for eggs processed meat cakes and dessert and butter they concluded egg causes cancer another one at the university of minnesota american journal of epidemiology volume 149 1999 29083 post menopausal women were studied Consum- consumption of egg was also also associated with an increases of ovarian cancer that was their con- conclusion and now this is almost 30000 real women 21275 doctor were studied in the physician health study circulation 117 2008 just eating one day a egg resulted in a dramatic increase in outright heart failure this was adjusted for many factors so the results are very solid here many people normally have two eggs breakfast per day see i can go on here again and again and i can like write a book having all these studies all these studies have been intentionally they were published but they were published only once they were never marketed across the globe so they were published in these journals and packed up what happens to do the marketing you need a lot of funds and these companies they don't allow that because their whole economy is running on them and i think it's not the question of economy it looks like psychopaths are running this world so there are so many studies which i can give you and if any one of you still feel that we are lacking something scientifically then i am really sorry i i think i'm not able to provide you enough facts and proofs it depends on you whether you want to continue with egg or not apart from egg let me take few studies for like cow cow milk what are the benefits of cow milk see the cow milk is totally different thing it is created by the hormone hormone converts the blood into the milk and already i have given you ample amount of reasoning why cow milk is not anywhere related to eating egg on the contrary we should never drink the milk of cow which is milked by machines which is not kept in a proper way or the milk is not organic the question is not only organic the cow should be allowed to roam free in the field there should not be any injury to the cow she would she should have been kept in an environment which is full of peace and love the way the cows are kept in india but nowadays even the cows are killed in india so we cannot compare with that so let me take few of the scientific studies about the milk and after that we'll complete this presentation